So the bear and the two travelers. Two men were traveling together when a bear suddenly met them on their path. One of them climbed up quickly into a tree and concealed himself in the branches. The other, seeing that he must be attacked, fell flat on the ground. And when the bear came up and felt him with his snout and smelt him all over, he held his breath and feigned the appearance of death as much as he could. The bear soon left him, for it is said he will not touch a dead body. When he was quite gone, the other traveler descended from the tree and jocularly inquired of his friend what it was the bear had whispered in his ear. He gave me this advice, his companion replied. Never travel with a friend who deserts you at the approach of danger. Misfortune tests the sincerity of friends. Uh, this, so let's, let's go over the uh, narrative here. So two men traveling together. The bear came upon them suddenly, and one of the guys climbed up quickly into a tree and hid in the branches. So he just ran off. And I'm sure he assumed that his buddy was going to run off. I mean, I'm trying to think like, yeah, a lot of people would run off. I mean, you're not going to like, I mean, I guess, you, especially if the bear's really close. I'm trying to think like it's probably pretty common. Uh, most people would just scatter. Um, unless you read a bunch of stuff. I know that sometimes when it comes to like bears, you should like be very, very still. Um, but again, I'm, I'm a city slicker, as, as I've probably said before on these, these videos. So I don't know a lot about the wilderness and wild bears and whatnot. But yeah, I mean, this seems like a normal reaction. So he climbs up quickly in a tree, you know, scared. And he's hoping, okay, hopefully my, my buddy does the same thing. Jumps into the, a different tree and hides himself in the branches. So the other guy, seeing that he must be attacked. Now he falls flat on the ground. The bear came up and felt him with a snout. Smelt him all over. He held his breath. Um, and when the bear came up and felt him with the snout and smelt him all over... He held his breath. So the man held his breath. So he feigned the appearance of death as much as he could. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is exactly uh, what I believe um, is taught. Uh, that you should like pretend you're dead and like try not to breathe and all that stuff. So I think he's doing it, doing it right. Um, but again, city slicker, not sure. You know, comment in the comments or, you know, that. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, I'll learn something new. But... The bear soon left him, for it is said that he will not touch a dead body. Okay, so that, you know, this from 2,000 years ago, I guess this is, you know, potentially, you know, where a lot of, you know, a lot of this research comes from, and then, you know, people being out in the forest, in the woods, and coming across bears, they've probably tested this. But yeah, it's, it's kind of cool to, to, to see that these things that we read or that we remember, even me, I remember these vaguely. Like, oh, pretend you're dead, pretend you're dead. Like, I remember this vaguely, like when you're out in the real world, um, in the real, in the forest, which is different real world than society. But in the forest, um, if you come across a dare, pretend, a bear, pretend you're dead. Because that, that, that thing is, is big and scary. So uh, a lot of times they're, they're big and scary. So when he was quite gone, I guess it depends on who you come across, if it's a cub or, you know, what the species, you know, what the uh, family is, but. When he was quite gone, the other traveler descended from the tree and jocularly, uh, like humorously, um, like if, yeah, like if you're jocular, I think, I, in terms of memory, I try to think like, you know, a bunch of, you know, jocks cr cracking jokes with one another, like jocular, that sort of how I remembered it when I first came across the word. So I, I try to remember like a, a scene, like a snapshot that kind of sounds like the word. And if it fits, then that's what I'm going to use. If it doesn't fit, then I'll use something totally different. So jocularly meaning um, humorously, like in a funny, of a vibrant. And, you know, I think in the same way, like that jocular, like a jock, it doesn't mean like super gentle, um, you know, especially, you know, you're playing sports. It's really competitive. It's cutthroat. You've got, you know, personalities and discipline and, you know, just hard work. So, um but yeah, it seems like not like super light humor, like kind of funny and maybe even a little bit snarky. And if you want, we should look it up. So let's check it out. Um, so let's look up jocular. So jocular, the adjective version, jocularly is the adverb. So jocular, it means fond or characterized by joking, humorous or playful. Okay. Um, she sounded in jocular mood, humorous, funny, witty, comic, comical, amusing, droll, Waggish, jokey, hilarious, facetious, tongue-in-cheek, playful. It doesn't make the distinction 
there isn't a distinction here between jocular and like funny. Um, so I guess it doesn't necessarily mean like extra aggressive or gruff with, with your humor. But I think of it personally, like in the stuff that I've read and just my, my muscle memory, if I'm going to pick something that has a more snarky, like even somewhat snarky or mildly snarky, if I, if I don't want it to, if I don't want to use the word snarky, um, uh, but I want to, want to make it seem a little bit more aggressive, I'll use the word jocular. Like I actually think that jocular is a little bit more aggressive of a word than like witty or silly. Um, but that's just because of how it sounds, you know, jocular. you know, so, uh, and just based on just my memory. So that's the, that's the thing too, is like, there's, there's just in terms of reading and, and, um, study and, and, uh, leisure reading and whatnot. Like, even though certain words mean the same exact thing as another word, um, the, the person that's writing or communicating might have a, an opinion just based on what they've read and just their memory, um, you know, what situations they would like to use a certain word in. So I always think jocularly is like, yeah, like, you know, punching each other and, you know, wrestling, like sort of, you know, like a little bit more aggressive. Like I wouldn't put jocularly like two, two, you know, six year old, you know, girls or kids, you know, um, or jocularly, you know, hanging out. I don't, I just wouldn't feel like it would fit there. But if there are like, you know, two burly dudes, you know, were jocularly cracking jokes while they were, were, were lifting weights. I mean, I guess, I guess that's, that's sort of in practice, you know, what, a person can make a decision on, even though in the actual definition is, you know, um, it doesn't reflect any kind of distinction from, you know, say humorous or funny or witty. So what it was, the bear had whispered in his ear. He gave me this advice. His companion replied, never travel with, okay. So quite of his friend, what, okay. So the bear whispered in his ear, so the bear, so then we go back. So let's go back. So it, it, we don't know that the bear whispered in his ear. This is this is new information to the reader. So, but it's interesting. It says, if he held his breath, he felt the appearance of death. Um, but maybe that, that, uh, that guy that was hiding in the tree, like he saw, he thought that the bear was whispering in his ear. So he gave me this advice. Never travel with the friend who deserts you at the approach of danger. And that's pretty interesting because a misfortune tests and sincerity of friends. Okay, so it's interesting. Um, it's one of those, it's kind of like, I guess it's kind of like the Titanic. I guess it's kind of like, uh, you know, a, a plane, you know, not to be harrowing, but like, you know, a plane, you know, crack, about to crack. I don't know. It, it, uh I, I believe that this, it, what really matters here is the context, the, you know, this, this story, actually, I, I would want to actually see a little bit more deep detail, not to knock Aesop, but here I would want to see more detail. So we have to fill in the blanks, you know, in terms of what decisions they made, like they might've had a conversation on the way there. You know, hey, if we come across a bear, just run. You know, you, you don't know that. So that's the thing about Aesop's fables and just reading in general. You have to kind of make the leap and you have to kind of interpret, you know, interpret in, in the vein of what the author is communicating. So right here, the author is communicating that that the friend desert, that, that, that the friend deserted the other friend and that, you know, we're going to assume that they didn't have that conversation beforehand. We're going to assume that perhaps they either didn't have a conversation about what they would do if there was a bear that ran in the woods and like faced them, um, you know, uh, presumably, you know, 10 feet tall, standing straight up, um, or that uh, they either did, didn't have the conversation at all, or they had a conversation where they were like, hey, don't desert me. Let's make a promise that we won't desert each other if, if we come across a bear. We'll like, you know, go back to back and fight it, or we'll both drop down right beside each other and pretend we're dead. You know, so here's where I would want to see a little bit more backstory, like specific specificity in terms of the backstory, because I feel like it might help with regards to this specific story. 
Because if this were to happen and you're facing imminent death and, you know, especially if the bear, and also I, I would want to see a screenshot. Like I would want to see exactly where the bear was, how close the bear was, you know, um, you know, I think there are a lot of factors that come into play that would really make somebody say, okay, I'm not going to, this person's not my friend anymore and all. However, with all that being said, I also think that when you're, when you're hiking with a friend, um, that, you know, just taking, you know, taking that specific snapshot and then a bear comes across, you're probably not going to just run off and like, you know, just, ah, like in a, a frenzy. But again, it has to do with that person's personality. Like what if that person's personality is, um, you know, like really anxious and, uh, and maybe they're afraid of bears. Maybe, you know, there, there could be a backstory, right? There could be like, maybe, maybe, um, maybe, you know, some backstory happened to him with a bear where he almost died or, you know, I mean, I just feel like there's, there, there's so much, there's so many more potential pieces of the story that might have contributed to this situation. You know, running from fear because of fear is very different than grabbing somebody and sticking them in the face of danger, right? So I guess to, uh, not to like back up the guy, like support the guy that like ran up the tree, I just think that there might be more de detail necessary to help us make a judgment that this is a, you know, cut you out of my life event, cut you out of my life moment, um, you know, in, in, in a friendship. So, you know, I, I like these stories because they're, they're, they're short and pithy and you can sort of explicate them, um, and think about them, uh, in terms of, in reference to like humanity and, and in real life, in real life, what would, and we can also look at the, the language and see how, how Aesop, you know, puts together, you know, these stories and, and whatnot, but, you know, obviously deserting you in, 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 at the approach of danger, it does make sense. And, you know, I would not be surprised if this happened to somebody and, and they didn't, they didn't talk to that person again, you know, um, I, it could make sense, but it also could make sense, um, if that person did keep talking to, to them and forgave them and said, you know what, I understand it's, it's tough you got a life and death situation, you know, it's like, kind of like, if, I mean, not to get all morbid or anything, but it's kind of like those, those shooters, the, the shooters, like you have an active shooter, active shooter, you know, shooting up a school, shooting up a movie theater. It's like, you know, um, no one knows what they would do. I mean, I mean, there are stories, um, you know, there are stories about how, you know, people huddled up and, and they, they, you know, try to protect their, their girlfriends or their spouses, or, you know, even just, just someone, you know, near them or someone who they really cared about. Um, you know, but, uh, there were other stories about people just ran, you know, cause they, they just, um, you know, you, you just, it's really difficult. You don't know what, I, I really think this specific story would do much better with a lot more detail, perhaps, you know, in the hands of another author a lot more de 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 detail because I think it's really hard to make a judgment on this decision. But at the same time, you want to keep in mind that it still holds water, right? You, you just in general, in terms of the lesson that this fable is trying to teach, you want to keep in mind that you don't want friends that every time something bad happens in your life, your car breaks down, you know, you, you, um, you get stuck somewhere and and you're, you know, someone, you know, you and you and someone get into a fight, and then you get stuck somewhere, and and you need, you need a ride somewhere. You need you need help mo uh, moving. I mean, any, well, especially danger. I mean, danger. Like, um, you're scared of this, or you're scared of that, or, uh, you know, if someone never comes through, never helps you, never, never connects with you, never cares about you, and comes and and uh, comes to your rescue, that, that 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 that's not a friend. So even though in this situation, I think you know, that there are multiple ways of looking at it and it all depends on sort of the details around this story. Um, I still think that the, the message holds, holds true and, and resonates clearly. And that is, you know, if someone keeps deserting you when there's danger and doesn't like, you know, 
uh, support you and back you up, like that's a big negative. Um, you know, so I think that that's really important. Uh, we had a strange, um, we had a strange, uh, situ the last thing I'll say is I had a strange situation with, um, you know, I'm not bragging. I'm just, just thinking about this because this, this actually happened. And I remember thinking like, I don't want to cause a scene because her mom's right there. So I was tutoring this, this girl and she's, she's probably about, I think she's nine. And we're at the library and we, we met early in the morning, like right when the library opened, like around 10. So we're there working on math. And then this homeless lady comes up to us. Nothing, I'm not anti-homeless. Uh, I'm just telling a story. So this homeless lady came up, just came right up to us. And we were, we had a circular table. It was pretty small and everything, it was totally covered. We had her backpack, my backpack. We had a, her book open and she was taking notes. And, and, um, this homeless lady came up and first of all, she was like walking by us a couple times, which, um, like really close to us. And then she came right up to me and stared at me and said, can I sit here? And it was a little bit like challenging and I don't know, it just, it seemed a little bit challenging. And I was like, no. I like right at her and I was like, nope. And I, I wasn't like super warm. I guess I'm sure if I had been super warm, maybe she would have just walked off. But I really felt like there was a little bit of danger in, in just in her vibe and just, you know, just, uh, I don't know. Maybe she's mentally ill. I mean, that's the first thing you think of, you know, when you, you, you know, that's the first thing I think of when I think, see someone homeless. I think they could be mentally ill or drugs or alcohol or they were or all the above or a, a lot of loss at the same time. And, you know, I don't know, there's, there's, I mean, I've talked with a lot of, of people who, who, you know, are homeless and, um, you know, where I live, you know, near Portland, Oregon, there's a lot of, you know, homeless folks. So, uh, I definitely have a lot of experience, but she just, it seemed like danger to me. So I was a little bit gruff. So I was like, no, I was like, nope. And I was actually a little bit annoyed that she came up and asked, and, oh, also the other, the other part of the story, um, that I want to share is that. There were literally 10 tables uh, around us, 10 or 15 tables. I mean, it was right when the library opened. So it's not like there's like hundreds of people waiting to go to the library. It's not like an amusement park. This is a library, you know, and there's five floors. The other thing is there's five floors. So there's so many floors, so much room. And yeah, there were some homeless people that came in, you know, probably, you know, to get out. I, mean, I don't think it was that cold that day or that rainy, but regardless. So some people came in, you know, in the mornings, hang out, have some water, you know, get some warmth you know, whatever, but it wasn't that crowded. It was a big library, five stories, plenty of room, hundred, dozens and dozens of tables. So for her to come up to us, it felt a little creepy to me. And it felt a little bit dangerous to me. This girl is nine years old. Her mom was right beside us because her mom like works uh, uh, near us on her computer, like for her, her business, you know, while we're working together in the library because she obviously like drives the kid to the library and all that stuff. So, um... Uh, so that was the whole scenario. So that's why I responded quickly in kind of a gruff manner. The lady comes back and she's really loud. She's like, starts yelling at us. She's looking at some magazine. Like she got really offended just because I wasn't like super nice. Like, no, please. There's somewhere else to go. Like, I guess I could have been that way, but I, I just, I really, I think most folks can feel it too. If you can feel danger because you, you know, you've, you felt it before, like you, 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 you know, you, the red flags are usually like right on. Well, I was right on because, um, this lady starts barking and being gruff, making snarky remarks. Like, um, I forget exactly what she uh, said, but she was yelling rudely. And there were literally like 15 people, um, studying in this, in this area, this vicinity, it was like the open area. Um, you know, just a bunch of folks, a few, few were homeless, but then there were a bunch of people who just were there to study on their laptops and reading and had phones and whatnot. So anyways, um, immediately I, I had to think about a decision. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Should I cuss her out? And da, 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 da. I'm not going to cuss her out. Right. Cause you know, you know, and also if, if, if the little girl wasn't there and I wasn't working with her, and obviously, if you know the mom, if if they weren't there, I might have even have ignored this lady, either ignored the lady, or put on my headphones and walked off. Maybe we go went to a different floor, 
Um, or if I was really in a bad mood, maybe I would have like snapped at her and, you know, said, said a few snappy words to her. Um, although, you know, I try not to, to go there. Um, but you know, I knew immediately that this is not, I also didn't want this girl to see me as like this, you know, I didn't want her to see me in any way. Like that wasn't just, I'm a tutor. I'm there helping her out, working on math, you know? It's just, it's all about the time and place, the venue, who you're with, etc. So I said, why are you bothering us? Please go away. Please go away. And then she came back and she kept saying stuff. And she, she, she was saying even more stuff. Why aren't you? Where, 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 where? You know, you, you're trying to teach. And da, 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 da. So quickly, even though if I was alone, I, it could have went a couple other ways. I might even ignored her. I mean, I knew she was homeless. She might have been mentally ill. Um... But she was bothering us, and I did feel danger and drama. So I went. I was a tattletale. I went straight to the guy sitting at the, the information desk, and I said, "Look, man, this lady is yelling at us. She's asking us to sit down, and it's clear that we we have this table totally covered, and there's 15 tables available with nobody in them. She doesn't need to sit by us." And it felt creepy, like she was trying to sit next to this little girl, like or she. I don't know. It just felt. It just felt awkward. Really, really weird. And I didn't like it. I just didn't like her. Um, the moment she came to ask us to sit down, I'm like, I do not like this lady. And it wasn't a homeless thing. It wasn't like, a, it's nothing to do with that. It's just just the situation. So just painting the whole picture, you know, and then he immediately got, and it was, it was wild because he immediately got the security guards. And, you know, and I was paying attention to, to this girl and studying. I, I didn't want to keep like looking back and like interrupting her because I know she was scared. And she told me later, like at the end of it, she said she her heart heartbeat was racing and da 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 because both of us were kind of alarmed. But I, I wanted to really focus and be a professional. And um, I think the mom had her headphones on, um, but she she never came over. Like afterwards, we we walked over to her mom and we told her the whole story. And so, anyways, the lady, I think she had to be, I don't know if she had to be restrained or anything. But the security guards came and they took her downstairs and she's like, "You're not gonna kick me out!" And she starts yelling and screaming like four floors down and. It was just, you know, I think I was right because she, she caused a major scene. And, um, so I think my instincts were right. Anyways, long story short is I want to say that story for a couple reasons. Um, but I think I made the right move because, you know, in public, sometimes it's important to cause a scene. If something bad is happening or if you think something bad is going to happen, you know, um, so for here, you know, if I had deserted her, so painting that whole story in the backstory, if I had deserted her, like just said, oh yeah, go ahead and sit here and, and then left and let this weird lady sit next to her, you know, I would have been des deserting her completely. That didn't even cross my mind. It would never cross my mind. Like I immediately was like, I need to protect this kid. Um, so yeah, I'm not telling the story to like brag. It was, you know, you know, probably, uh, a, you know, one of my, my good, great, uh, you know, um, responses. I think it was a smart response, not a great response, but it was, I think it was a smart response. Um, and I think, you know, it was pretty standard for most folks in that situation that who were in my, my shoes. But yeah, so in that situation, yes, if I had just left and be like, yeah, just go ahead and sit down and then move my bag and just left, and didn't even come back. Like that's, that's definitely deserting someone at the approach of danger. There's danger coming along, or potential danger, even if potential danger, like you don't know if the bear's for sure danger, the bear's going to like eat these, you know, eat these, these guys. Um, but this lady was potential danger and I knew I wanted her away from us. Plus we were working. I was at a work. I mean, there's multiple reasons, multiple levels, but I want her to get really far away from us. So anyways, long story short is, um, Aesop, um, this story for Aesop is, is solid. I think it, it connects to the story that I just shared, but it doesn't have to be direct and, and exact because I think in this situation, you know, there could have been more to the story where they both decided that if they saw a bear, they both would just run, would just like, like run off and who knows, you know, or they would run to the nearest tree or one of them would, you know, so we don't know what the backstory is. Anyways, uh, hopefully I didn't bore you to death with that story. Um, misfortune tests the sincerity of friends. Just know that if you keep having misfortune and, and people just don't support you or care about you or help you, that that's probably a bad friend. Um, 
Now, misfortune is, is, you know, is a real deal. It's, you know, in the sense of something happening to you that you didn't, you didn't ask for. So something happens to you repeatedly and you don't ask for it. Um, and your friends, you know, your friend abandons you, then that might, might not be the best friend. So hopefully that helps uh, with regards to The Bear and the Two Travelers by Aesop. Thank you so much.